And welcome back to the program. You're listening to Sacred Space here in CGIUM 101.5 out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. We're sitting here talking with Marcy and Quisner about, uh, well, we're going to wrap it up here. We're going to wrap the three stories up. So let's let's wrap it up. Okay, thank you. Um, so here we have four nations now that are ready to join the Great Law. And if you look on a map, you would see that geographically they were positioned so that the Mohawk and the Oneida were on the east, and on the west were the Seneca and Cayugas. But in between these four nations were the fierce and vicious Onondaga, who were ruled by the wicked sorcerer Onondaro. There could be no unity for the people as long as they were divided right in the middle geographically. And so a council was called again. And at this time, it is probably good to also tell you that uh, the Jaconsa would say was an important part of these councils, that a lot of times the peacemaker would not start a council until her and her representatives would show up. So here they held a council, and they discussed what they must do about Anadaro. And, of course, many options were offered, for he had caused a great deal of enemies and misery among the people. But the Jaconsa say stood forward, and she said, what we need to do is we need to offer him the most important position in our confederacy. We need to make him head faith keeper, the fire keeper of our, of our longhouse, of our Haudenosaunee. And so that was accepted, and the offer was extended to Anadaro. And uh, he said, Let me, give me some time to think about this come back tomorrow, which is a saying that means come back in a year. So in a year's time, the peacemaker and he and Watha got into the Whitestone canoe and headed across Lake Onondaga with the intent of finding out Onondaga's answer. And as they come out on the lake, suddenly the wind began to blow, and the clouds became dark and thunderous overhead. And as the wind blew, it was though they could hear the scream of Onondaga in the wind and the wind became so fierce that the waves began to mount very high on Lake Onondaga until the little canoe was threatened to be shoved right to the bottom of the lake and so the peacemaker returned to the shore very shortly he tried again and as he and Hayenwatha went out upon the lake in the little white canoe again the storm arose the wind came up, and again in the wind, they could hear the scream of Anataro eerily as the wind howled around them, and the clouds became thunderous and dark, and again the little boat was forced to return to the shore. He and Watha and the peacemaker didn't know quite what to make of all this, and so again a council was held, and the Jaconsese came. And this time she gave to the peacemaker a song of peace. She told him that this song would still the storm and it would quiet the rage in Anadaro's heart. So this time as they headed out upon the lake and the storm began to howl and the, the wind began to create great and enormous waves, the peacemaker began to sing this song and immediately the lake became quiet and they continued their journey when they reached the other side the canoe was not quite big enough and so he left he and went that and went back across the lake to pick up the chikun sasei and the ward chief of the seneca and they made it across the lake with no problems now they continued to look for the smoke of the Anadaro, and they found him in a swamp that was dark and damp, which only added more eeriness and fierceness to his appearance with the snakes in his hair. But they were undaunted. They forged forward. They asked the Anadaro to come to council with them, and would he accept their great law? Now, Anadaro had noticed that they'd been able to overcome his storm, and he realized that their words had great power. But it was not until he walked into the longhouse, and here he looked around, and he saw his own people, and he saw the leaders of the nations around him and the people of the other nations. 
that he realized that he was now alone, that he stood alone, that there was no one on his side. And he realized the power of the words and the power of this great peace that the peacemaker was bringing to the people. At first, Anadaro was frightened, for he had done many wicked things, and he thought that the people had gathered together to destroy him, to kill him. But instead, the people joined together in this song of peace, in this song of love, and poured out upon Anadaro all the forgiveness and love that these people had. And as Anadaro felt this, his body became straight. And his mind became straight, and he appeared like other men. In other words, the people healed him with their love. At this time, the Jakomsa say now combs the snakes out of his hair and makes him presentable to the people. The uh, Seneca war chief brings forth the Gustawan with the horned antlers upon it, and they set it upon Anadaro's head, making him fire keeper of the Haudenosaunee. And the words have remained with the Onondaga here in New York State since that time. They are still the fire keeper of the Haudenosaunee. Now, the peacemaker and uh, Hiawatha and Jukunsa say, had worked very hard to bring the people to this point. All the people are gathered together, and Hainwatha stands before the people, and he takes an arrow, and he breaks it over his knee, and he shows the people, this represents each one of our nations individually. We are easily broken, easily overcome. But now Hainwatha binds the five arrows together. As he tries to break them, they are invincible. And he tells the people, this is now our people. We are one mind, one spirit, one heart. We are united. We are the Haudenosaunee.